Good afternoon, you guys. A big one today. How can we be sure about the resurrection of Christ? Let's see what Hank Anagraf says. If devotees of the kingdom of the cults, adherents of world religions, or liberal scholars are correct, the biblical account of the resurrection of Christ is fiction, fantasy, or a gargantuan fraud. If, on the other hand, Christianity is factually reliable, his resurrection is the greatest feat in human history, no middle ground exists. The resurrection is history or hoax, miracle or myth, fact or fantasy. First, liberal and conservative scholars alike agree that the body of Jesus was buried in the private tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. As a member of the Jewish court that condemned Jesus, Joseph of Arimathea is unlikely to be Christian fiction, Mark 15, 43. Jesus' burial in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea is substantiated by Mark's gospel, in verse 46 there, and is therefore far too early to have been the subject of legendary corruption. The earliest Jewish response to the resurrection of Christ presupposes the empty tomb, Matthew 28, verses 11 through 13, and in the centuries following the resurrection, the fact of the empty tomb was forwarded by Jesus' friends and foes alike. Additionally, when you understand the role of women in first century Jewish society, what is extraordinary is that the empty tomb story would feature females as the discoverers of the empty tomb. The fact that women are the first witnesses to the empty tomb is most plausibly explained by the reality that, like it or not, they were the discoverers of the empty tomb. This shows that the gospel writers faithfully recorded what happened, even if it was embarrassing. In short, early Christianity could not have survived an identifiable tomb containing the corpse of Christ. By the way, the reason that that is fantastic is because the testimony of women in that century, in that culture, was, uh, we'll just say, unimportant at that time. Furthermore, Jesus gave his disciples many convincing proofs that he had risen from the dead. Paul, for example, points out that Christ, quote, appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep, end quote, 1 Corinthians 15, 6. It would have been one thing to attribute these supernatural experiences to people who had already died. It was quite another thing to attribute them to multitudes who were still alive. As the famed New Testament scholar of Cambridge University, C.H. Dodd, points out, there can hardly be any purpose in mentioning the fact that most of the 500 are still alive unless Paul is saying, in effect, the witnesses are there to be questioned. Finally, what happened as a result of the resurrection is unprecedented in human history. In the span of a few hundred years, a small band of seemingly insignificant believers succeeded in, succeeded in turning an empire upside down. While it is conceivable that they would have faced torture, vilification, and even cruel deaths for what they fervently believed to be true, it is inconceivable that they would have been willing to die for what they knew to be a lie. As Dr. Simon Greenleaf, the famous Royale professor of law at Harvard, put it, if it were morally possible for them to have been deceived in this matter, every human motive operated to lead them to discover and avow their error. If then their testimony was not true, there was no possible motive for this fabrication. For further information, please see Hank Hanegraaff, The Third Day, or Lee Strobel, The Case for Christ. See especially William Lane Craig, Reasonable Faith. Hope some of that is informational. If you've never heard it before, is Christ's empty tomb fact or fiction? Hope you have a great day. See you.